Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on my channel. This is the final corset that I made for my 18, 1860s ensemble that I entered into Foundations Revealed's competition last year, or it was this year. It's been a long year already. Um, so this video is just me going through the process of that. There will probably be noise in the background. I used to attempt to wait till I had no kids at home because they were at school or taking a nap or whatever to do this voiceover and that's not possible during the summer. They're all home and they're all loud. I closed the door, I told them I was recording and we will see how this goes. But if you hear noise, I have five children. So obviously I've just cut out the corset and right here I'm starting to flat line it. I used the pattern from Red Threaded's um, site for their corset. I will leave it in the description box below. Um, I did have to make a couple of alterations to one of the sizes. I forget exactly which size I did. It's been a while. Um, I had to add just a little bit here and there, but I don't believe I recorded any of that. I just did that off camera because I knew that there was already going to be a ton of footage. So I did it in two layers of the same fabric. I was once again using a scrap from my stash. This is still probably not the best thing I could have used, but it was the perfect amount. I literally had nothing left over and it was sturdier and held up better than the first corset fabric choice that I talked about in a previous video and it just worked a lot better. It still frayed weirdly in a few places and I had to do some uh, hand whip stitch around the tips of the bus scores eventually but all in all I really like it. It's not nearly as shiny it's a lot sturdier and I just again did it in two layers so after I flatlined them all together um, I just started working my way through piecing the corset together and there are a lot of steps in a corset <laughs> this will probably be the last video I do with one for a while again I enjoy making them but they are probably the most step intensive project that I've done so far. Um, and yeah, I'm, I need a break from them. So I am very pleased with how this one went together. It definitely fits the silhouette better. Obviously it was made for <laughs> the 1860s. Um, I was really glad to find the places to get historical patterns because I knew I really knew that the ones at the regular fabric store with Simplicity and McCall's probably weren't the most accurate but when I first started doing any costuming that's the only thing I knew about and it's what I had to go off of and um, I hadn't done any research so anyway glad that I found some patterns and I had to wait for this one longer than I wanted to because um, my husband got me the pattern itself for a Christmas present and due to COVID and probably multiple other reasons it did get delayed in shipping. I don't fault Red Threaded for that at all. I think that they did pretty good. Um, I understand small businesses and stuff. So anyway, I'm very, very pleased with the outcome of this pattern. Um, I put the montage here and I'm flying through a lot of the steps. Um, there are so many corset tu tutorials online. I don't really believe the purpose of this particular video is for a tutorial as much as I enjoy watching someone construct something even if I already know what they're doing or how they're doing it. And sometimes I enjoy watching them construct stuff even if I have absolutely no clue what they're doing. <laughs> um, so anyway, for whoever wants to watch it, I enjoy putting these videos together.
as you can see right here in addition to the pattern that I did to tweak it a little make it a little bit more my own and what I wanted I did put some cording in the bus cores and I absolutely love how it came out I did have to fiddle with them a little bit to make them come out exactly how I wanted and to make sure that they were even across both gores on both sides but I'm really really pleased and then to finish these off the easiest solution that I could come up with was just wrapping the edges in twill tape like I did there um, I used this twill tape for the boning channels and anytime I needed to in the interior And yay for starting the boning channels um, I did use a combination of boning for this I used just straight steel boning and then spiral boning um, depending on the boning channel and where it was placed um, if it needed to bend I used the spiral boning and I believe that was recommended in the pattern so I think I was just following the directions there I made this right after Christmas so it's been a little bit and um, and one thing that um, I may or may not point out at the end I don't remember um, I tried to keep the bus scores as accurate to the size as possible even though um, that was larger than I am um, <laughs> I did end up putting some additional padding in it after this whole thing was done and tacked it in um, but I felt like it kept the shape of the silhouette better and um, one of the things that I have learned obviously about corsetry is that um, sometimes you, there's some places it doesn't get made to your size you make your size to fit that part to keep the shape and um, uh, so that is what I had to do there As you can see here, I did finish the seams that weren't being placed under boning channels by filling them down. Uh, the fabric was uh, fiddly enough that th it did take me a few minutes to get it to lay how I wanted it to. And um, I'm sure it's obvious that I did as little of this by hand as possible. Um, it was on the corset, it was going to be underwear, so um, it didn't matter. Um, <laughs> and I was running out of time and I needed to get it done and I still had a whole bunch of the other parts of the outfit to complete and I really couldn't even start the bodice of the dress until I had the corset done to make sure that I got it to lay how I wanted it to lay so I just needed to get it done and I thought I had the correct steel the st spiral boning that I needed and I ended up not so I had to order some and that led to the corset being almost done for like five days while I was waiting for it to get there so I ended up starting to sew on the top and bottom binding just so that I could get the back panel in with the lacing so I could try it on and get in, get the idea of 
sizing and everything for the bodice so I could get started on the bodice. So there may be some interesting looking steps in here, um, but um, I was doing what I had to do to get it done and the, this was one of those times that I was grateful. I have been sewing for a very long time, so even though this was historical and I'm sort of new to the historical element of it, um, I still understood certain things that I could go ahead and uh, work around and work with to um, to get it to the point that I could wear it as it would be worn even though it wasn't done. And yay, the spiral bones finally arrived, and thus I was able to move on to the binding at the top and the bottom. Uh, like I said a minute ago, I do have like, I think two, maybe two and a half to three inches of the binding already sewn on towards the back where the um, panels with the lacing are attached, because I had to do that before I could attach those panels, and so... I mean, that is not the preferred way to put binding on because it did give me some fun when I got to that part. But I managed, I got it done, and it worked. And the binding itself is just um, bias cut strips off of the same fabric. And in the vein of using up what I already had, I already had this ribbon. It isn't, you know, the best in the world, but it will hold. And I liked the um, the colors together. I thought they complemented each other well. And uh, before I get to the end, I will say this: I have a few corsets now that I've made, and this has got to be the most comfortable one. Um, it, it is so comfortable and I love how it fits and the way it shapes and um, unfortunately it may not fit me for very much longer because I have been losing a little bit of weight but um, I will probably see if I can make it fit and bring it down because it is just so comfortable so there she is I actually filmed this before I did the flossing. I did end up doing flossing, but I don't remember whether I got that done before the contest or not. Um, I'd have to go back and look at photos, which I don't have in front of me. Um, it wasn't, I think I did, but I think I saved it for like the last thing, even after I finished the dress, because I knew that it wasn't necessary. It was just something I wanted to do, and I didn't know if I was going to have time to do it. So, there she is. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait to do the petticoat next. That was a whole lot of fun and I love how it turned out so I'm looking forward to sharing that. Mm -hmm.